What is the legality of this? Uh, is it, could, can this work? Oh, good morning, Kirsty and Simon. Um, yes, it can work. It certainly can work. Uh, government can pass or put before Parliament uh, statutory instruments, as they have done with the care workers, anyone working in care homes, in fact, um, so they can extend or, or introduce a new statutory instrument. Uh, it goes through by what's called negative affirmation. So if nobody complains about it, it's not debated, but if anyone complains about it in Parliament, uh, they can debate it. If not, it goes through after 14 days. Uh, it makes new law uh, and it, it uh, gives government the power to insist that if a worker goes into a national health hospital, it won't just be national health uh, nurses and doctors, it will be anyone working in the national health service that will have to be double jabbed. Otherwise, they will not be allowed to work. Uh, and that will be lawful. Are there any reasons for exemption? Um, probably not. Um, government will probably not make any exemptions uh, because, that, because those workers will be in very close contact with medically compromised uh, patients, uh, patients who uh, are already very poorly uh, and who would possibly uh, be extremely ill or die uh, if they caught COVID. So for NHS workers, it is unlikely there'll be any medical exemptions at all. And anyone who refuses to be double jabbed or who themselves can't be, double, can't be vaccinated uh, because they themselves are medically compromised will either have to be paid on uh, paid suspension or redeployed if there is any redeployment or probably fairly dismissed. You know, we, we hear a lot about, you know, what, what the what they might do and what they might not do, you know, vaccine passports, this, that and the other, which didn't, didn't get over the line. Um, do you think this will happen? Yes, I think it probably will. We're in exceptional circumstances, exceptional times. The infection rates are rising rapidly. Uh, the death rates have not come down. Um, and there will be, unfortunately, uh, for the individuals, um, certain people who for whatever reason, uh, refuse to be vaccinated. And there will be jobs, such as jobs in the NHS, which they will not be allowed to continue. Um, and government will give themselves powers to do this. And one can see that whilst human rights will be called in aid, everybody has a right not to be forced to be vaccinated or take any medical treatment. There are, of course, corresponding duties if you have a right. There are also conflicting rights. There's the right of the patient not to be exposed to anything which could uh, damage their health further or pose a real risk to their health and their life. Um, and if someone says, I have a right not to be vaccinated, they also have a duty, a corresponding duty. That corresponding duty is not to work in an occupation which could harm the health of others. Um, and so I think on balance, Government is quite right to consider extending the legislation or the regulations that they've already passed for anyone working in care homes to NHS workers. Uh, and this isn't actually new because uh, anybody working in operating theatres have in their contract a requirement they have to have a vaccination for hepatitis B. Gillian, I've just had an email from Bob who says if people that are double jabbed can catch and pass on COVID, What's the difference? Well, the difference is that it, you are far less likely. It is known to be less transmissible in anyone who's been double jabbed. And the, it's understood that the virus is much weaker. So it, it uh, will not cause the same sort of health damage and pot potential fatality uh, than if it's caught from someone who isn't jabbed at all. Uh, being double jabbed, as we know, doesn't stop you getting the virus, but it makes it less transmissible. And for the individual themselves, um, they're not nearly so ill. It isn't fatal normally. Um, and those who are double jabbed are usually able to control the infection at home. They're not normally hospitalized. Uh, and it's less transmissible. Uh, that is the evidence. Did you understand why some people are... Uh, deeply uneasy at the thought of your job being at risk if you don't 
take a jab like this. That this is that this is the big brother. This is this is the nanny state overdoing it. Well, no, because the legislation won't affect all employment. We're talking about a discrete, in fact, a unique employment. We're talking about the National Health Service, where very, very ill people are being cared for in very close contact with NHS workers. Um, and so, actually, I don't think this is the start of Big Brother. I don't think that government will extend this at all to any other form of employment. So uh, I, I don't think this is Big Brother. Remember, we're in a, a, an almost unique situation. We have a pandemic that we've never seen before. It is being transmitted um, in the main anyway, uh, because travel is so easy now. Uh, when the Spanish flu hit in 1917 and 1918, it died out because we didn't have this extensive travel. So we're not in the same situation as when we had the last pandemic. And government feels quite rightly they've got to do something now. It's been going on nearly for, for nearly two years. And there are very vulnerable people in hospital who would be and could be exposed to an unnecessary risk to their health. And I'm afraid that uh, anyone who works in the NHS uh, service should understand that, yes, they have a right to refuse to be vaccinated, but the corresponding duty is on their employer to protect the more vulnerable, that is, the patients and other, other staff members, because, um, you know, the, they, the unvaccinated could uh, affect badly other uh, national health workers uh, who could then get ill. You, you, you raise something there, which, which uh, the worry is this opens the door for all employers mm. to say, well, in that case, on that argument alone, we can do it as well. Well, uh, sadly for them, they can't. Um, the, there's a, a statute, the Public Health Control of Diseases Act 1984, which uh, provides that no one, other than by statute, can be forced to have any kind of medical treatment, including vaccinations. And any employer who seeks to put it into the contract, uh, they might be able to do that for uh, new staff. They certainly wouldn't be able to do that for existing staff and any existing staff who had imposed into their contract a requirement that they had to be double jabbed um, would almost certainly have a fair an unfair dismissal and I don't believe that tribunals would hold that that would be fair. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.